welcome to another video i am the star man and i'm out in the middle of nowhere at the moment or it feels like i'm out in the middle of nowhere just look at this can you see that sky behind me we had the sunset about an hour ago i'm in the forest of boland here in lancashire now i'm only about 30 minutes outside of blackpool we're around about um, 10 miles or so to the east of blackpool it's the end of august there's no moon in the sky tonight and the reason I've come out here tonight is because it's nice and clear and this is the time of the year when we get the darkness back and there's a chance to see the Milky Way and we can even see the galactic core of the Milky Way at this time of year. Into September, great time of year to get out there on a clear night if you can avoid the moon and see if you can see the Milky Way after sunset the earlier the better so the best time to probably go out at the moment at the moment it's probably about half past nine the sun went down about quarter past eight tonight so get out there any time from now towards in even into october i would say into october the later you leave it the more chance you, the less chance you've got to see in the galactic core because it does tend to set a little bit earlier the later we go on but certainly from now into september We've got those dark skies back. Great chance to get out there and see the Milky Way and possibly see the galactic core. If you happen to have a flat horizon, that is, and we don't have a flat horizon here, unfortunately, where we're looking towards the, um, the south, but we should be able to see quite a nice Milky Way tonight. I'm gonna set my camera up. I'll show you how I'm gonna set my camera up to see if we can get some shots of the Milky Way. Second, if I move this light. That's Frank over there, he's my lighting engineer <laughs> and my cameraman, yeah. So it's pretty dark here in the Forest of Bowl and we're just looking out towards the sort of west there. We can't see Blackpool because it's just behind that hill over there, but you can see Blackpool Tower if you just drive up this hill a little bit. But we're looking now towards the... You can see where the sun went down over there, yeah. Yeah, it's getting pretty dark now. I'm going to show you how to set up the camera now to take a picture of the Milky Way. Right, okay, so I've got my camera set up right here and it's my Nikon D850 camera, a full frame DSLR and I've got a 20mm f1.8 lens in it. That's a pretty fast lens. The lower the number of the aperture, the faster the lens is. Now, maybe some of you don't have a lens quite like this one. I expect most of you will probably have something like an 18 to 55, f3.5 to 5.6. So the fastest your aperture is going to be is f3.5 at 18 millimeters. That's the widest you can go and it's also the widest, f3.5 is the widest that that aperture inside your lens will, will go to. Now on mine here, I can go right down to f1.8. So that means I can get away with not having to boost the ISO up to pick up the Milky Way. I can probably get away with something like maybe ISO 1000 to 1600, because when you're out at night and you're taking pictures of stars, you want to take long exposures and you also want to boost your ISO up as well so that you take in those that starlight especially with the milky way as well you know because you it's very faint in the milky way so i'm just going to show you now how i would set this camera up to take a picture of the milky way right okay i hope you can see this i've got this flippy screen fortunately now this has i'm looking towards the darkness over there which you can't really see we're kind of looking towards the south and this direction where i'm pointing to is where the milky way is going to be later on so hopefully we're getting some nice pictures of the milky way but what we need to do is we need to set the camera up first and what i'm going to do is the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take the aperture all the way down as fast as it will go and it's going to go down to f 1.8 can you see look at that now can you see we can suddenly see the grass light up a bit there now because it's letting more light in f 1.8 is wide open that so that aperture inside the lens is as wide open as it can be now i expect quite a lot of you will not have a lens that will go quite as fast as that maybe you have one that goes down to f2.8 or something like that the faster the better which means the lower the number here the better it is for capturing the milky way now this thing here on, on the left there that's the shutter speed so we want to take that down and I want to take that down to say, well, I would probably go about um, 
I would say about 15 seconds, something like that. You need to make sure that your shutter speed isn't too long that your stars make little trails. If you're using a crop sensor camera at 18 millimeter, that's got an effective focal length of about 27 millimeters on a full frame camera. So I would probably say about 15 tops, maybe. You might need to go a little bit less if you didn't want to have like, um, you know, like stars turning into lines and that sort of thing. So next thing we're gonna do is boost the ISO. I'm gonna go up to, uh, I'm gonna go up to 1600 on this. So I've got 15 seconds, f1.8, and ISO 1600. Maybe I could go a little bit less than that, you know, because I've got quite a fast aperture there. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to focus. Now, I am pointing towards, hopefully, the planet Saturn, I'm hoping. Now then, I don't know if you can see that, but I want to get this lens focused now. Now, this can be quite difficult. I don't know if you can see this, but I've actually got a, something in the screen there, in that red box, it's looking very, very out of focus. Now that happens to be the planet Saturn. And I just want to show you this, just to give you some idea of how you can focus. Now I don't recommend, can you see that there? It just turned into a dot. I don't recommend that you normally focus on planets because planets are a little bit bloated and it's probably better to focus on a faint star just to get you your, your, your focus a little bit sharper but I think I don't know if you can tell now but can you see this this has now become a dot if I, if I turn it off can you see how it goes off it becomes bloated it almost disappears actually but if I turn it and turn it and turn that focus until that becomes like the smallest dot possible there now I've now got focus so there you go I've now set up this camera now to take photographs of the Milky Way and like I said it depends on what lens you're using you might be using an 18 to 55 so what you would probably have to do is if you're using an 18 to 55 f 3.5 you would probably need to use you could probably get away with the same shutter speed 15 seconds you might need to boost your iso to something like i would probably go up to 6400 if you can get away with it and yeah so there you go that's what i would do if you had a lens like that if you happen to have a faster lens all the better so now we're just going to wait for it to get dark and see if we can get some photographs of the Milky Way. Should look pretty amazing. Okay, I'm taking a bit of a rest now. I'm sat on this little bench here. Look at this, isn't it fancy? Like a stone work bench here. There's a bench on this side and there's also one on the other side as well. Yeah, anyway, I've just taken a test photograph of the Milky Way using those settings that I showed you on my camera. Check this out. You can still tell that it's not perfectly dark at the moment. There's a twilight in the sky at the moment. It, what, what, what it is, is the sky has not got perfectly dark yet because the sun hasn't gone low enough yet. But look at this, you can see the galactic plane. This is what we're all looking for. It looks absolutely amazing. You can see those star clouds already. Absolutely amazing. Just wait till later on when it gets darker. It'll look even better. Okay, so I've just got to show you this picture as well. I turned the camera around 90 degrees towards the east and I took this picture looking towards Cassiopeia. Absolutely amazing. Cassiopeia is that constellation that looks a bit like a W and you can see it towards the top half of this picture here. Oh my goodness, just look at this. Doesn't it look absolutely amazing? And you can see the plane of the Milky Way as it goes down there towards the bottom left of the photograph over the hills. And another amazing thing about this picture as well is, and we can use Cassiopeia, is that you can see the Andromeda Galaxy. It's slap bang in the centre of the picture. Just look at that. Can you see that? That is a galaxy far, far away. It's the most distant object that we can see in our night skies with our naked eye. And there you are. I managed to get a picture of a distant galaxy using those same settings that I was talking about for the Milky Way. How about that, eh? Absolutely amazing. Okay, so we've got a little bit of wispy cloud blowing across the sky at the moment uh, in the way of the Milky Way, which I might be able to show you on a time lapse at the end of the video. So what I've done is, for the time being, I've stuck my 300 millimeter lens on the tripod and I've also put it on top of my tracker and I've taken a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. 
check out this picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, which I've just taken. Doesn't this look absolutely amazing? The most distant object visible in the night sky with the naked eye, 2.5 million light years away. And I just took this photograph of it using my bog standard 300 millimeter lens, no telescope, but I was using my tracker. I'll have to do another video on it to show you how I took this picture. I've just taken another picture or tried to take another picture of the Milky Way but unfortunately I'm just showing you the picture on the screen now can you see the sky is a complete mess tonight we've got all these jet trails going across the sky you really can't predict anything like that unfortunately the sky has been completely messed up tonight by all these jet trails so getting a good picture of the Milky Way has been pretty much impossible tonight but at least I managed to get those amazing pictures of the Andromeda Galaxy. I also caught a picture of M51 as well, the Whirlpool Galaxy and the double cluster. So it's not been a, a complete disaster. And hopefully I've given you some idea about how to get a picture of the Milky Way yourself. If you manage to do that, please let us know what you think in the comments and I will see you again on the next video.